Between the 7th and 13th centuries, two major players vied for dominance over the Balkan Peninsula. The first and younger one was the first Bulgarian state and its successor, the second Bulgarian Empire. The second contester was the last legitimate successor of Rome, the resilient Eastern Roman Empire. The two powers engaged in what became one of the most continuous series of conflicts between two nations, the so-called Byzantine-Bulgarian Wars. By the 14th century, both of these states were a mere shadow of their former selves. The balance of power in the Balkans was soon to be shifted. A new ambitious player had arrived on the scene. The century-old Serbian kingdom, ruled by the powerful Nemanici dynasty, was just entering its heyday. Under the reign of King Stefan Dechenski, the Serbian realm experienced a significant rise in military power. Concerned by Serbia's increasing strength, the Byzantines and Bulgarians wasted no time and were quick to form a coalition against their neighbor. The end goal of this pact being the complete destruction of the Serbian kingdom. This plan, however, was about to fail miserably. On the 28th of July 1330, the Bulgarian army, led by the aggressive Tsar Michael Shishman, met with the Serbian forces, in charge of which was King Stefan Dechenski near the town of Velbush to modern-day Kustendil. The Bulgarians suffered one of their most humiliating defeats in their medieval history. The proud monarch Michael Shishman, dying himself from his wounds a couple of days after the battle. Learning of the decimation of his Bulgarian allies, the Roman Emperor Andronicus III abandoned the invasion of southern Serbia that he had previously begun while the Serbs were busy fighting on the eastern front. Serbia's rise to a hegemon in the Balkan Peninsula had just begun. In 1331, Stefan Dechenski was succeeded by his son, Stefan Dusan. The former forced his father to retire after he began considering to place another of his sons, Simeon Uroš, on the Serbian throne. Under the reign of the ambitious Dušan, Serbia would reach the zenith of its power. An opportunity for further Serbian expansion appeared in the 1340s, when the Byzantine Empire was engulfed in yet another civil war. By a careful maneuver of alliances with the different pretenders for the throne in Constantinople, Dušan skillfully exploited the chaos that had assailed Rome. Between 1341 and 1348, the Serbian ruler embarked on a series of military campaigns in Macedonia, Albania and Central Greece, which doubled the territory of his realm in less than a decade. In April 1346, Dusan was crowned Tsar or Emperor, thus laying the foundations of the Serbian Empire. Stefan Dusan would reign as an emperor for only nine years before dying in 1355. His empire would not outlive its creator by much either, it will collapse only 15 years later. This raises the question, why did this empire, which was seemingly on its rise, collapse so rapidly? The reasons for this quick downfall are many and complicated, but for the sake of this short video I will try to oversimplify them as much as I can. Stefan Dušan was succeeded by his young and inexperienced son, Stefan Uroš V. Immediately after his ascension on the Serbian throne, the empire began to fragment. This did not happen as much in the heartland of Serbia, but rather mostly in the newly acquired land. A previously mentioned paternal uncle of Stefan Uroš V, Simeon Uroš, succeeded from the empire, establishing an empire of his own in central Greece. Another powerful Serbian noble family, the Mrnjavčevici, ruled the region of Macedonia with an almost complete autonomy. The final blow for the Serbian empire would come from the Ottoman Beylik. The Ottomans, previously hired as mercenaries by the Byzantines during their attempt to hold the Serbian expansion, had now overrun nearly all former Balkan provinces of the Eastern Roman Empire. Seeing the immediate threat to the east, the head of the Marvnjavčević clan, Vukashin, raised a massive army to try and stop the Turks from expanding in Serbian territory. The forces of the Ottomans and Serbs clashed near the Maritza river. The battle ended disastrously for the Serbs and sealed Serbia's future fate. Vukashin, together with the many influential Serbian and Bulgarian nobles that had joined him in his campaign, perished in the midst of the battle, or died from their wounds a couple of days later. Following this clash, the victorious Ottomans vassalized most of Macedonia. Just months after the Serbian humiliation near Maritza, the childless emperor Stefan Uruš V died in 1371. The power vacuum that occurred after these events led to the rapid fragmentation of the Serbian lands, this time including the heartland of the realm as well. The year 1371 is officially marked as the end of the Serbian Empire, but not as the end of independent medieval Serbia. Some of the empire's successor states would remain intact for almost a century, until they as well fell prey to the rising Ottoman Empire. 